Welcome in everybody to this week's episode of Embraced by Night. Last episode. A challenge. Potentially a hazing. On purpose. Though the truth and roots of the encounter remain to be seen. Dean did obtain abstain. If you haven't watched last week's episode, you want to. For there were threads laid bare that will come to haunt the Coterie in future nights. That being said, all of you have piled into the Escalade. Angel is purposefully holding in an intense laceration gifted to him by a frenzying werebear named King. Marcus is in the driver's seat. Dean in the passenger looking... How does Dean look? I'm imagining distant. Uh, yeah, he, he kind of like is snapping in between being completely spaced out and then like very clearly kind of trying to put on the the mask of someone who is not deeply affected and traumatized by what just happened. Okay. So with a remote gaze. Yeah. But a slight smile trying to be himself. I need you to roll a wits and awareness, Dean, since you're in the front seat and everyone else will roll after you. All right, one second, sorry. I was just in the process of logging into D20. Oh shit, I have to do that too. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Really quickly, to set the scene in this tense interior, <laughs> what do each of your characters look like in this moment? What's the expression we would see if we were looking <laughs> through the window? <laughs> Lyra? Lyra's absolutely just, she's pristine, she's clean, she's fine, and she's just looking around them awkwardly, not knowing whether or not she should speak right now. Like, what the fuck happened to you guys? <laughs> Why do you look she's so very sad? Confused, um, and somewhat nosy, but reserving her her questions for later. Okay, Avery. Uh, Avery looks like death warmed over. Not in the fact that like yeah, their 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 shirts ripped up. Like they're they're definitely not in like a perfect picturesque clean kind of you know nice nice pressed shirt vibe like Lyra's. Um, but more than anything, it's just the fact that they are pissed. They are fucking angry. Um, normally they like, they're like semi, they're either having an emotional breakdown or they're very cool, calm, cool, and collected. And this is neither of those things. This is just like, don't talk to me, don't breathe in my general direction, I will fucking eviscerate you. Kind of like that cold, hard anger of just like, not... Ba ba barely holding on to things, not not doing great right now. Not not a happy sunshine camper. Gotcha. I imagine the gif with the cat, the little kitten, where it goes red. You know, the rage. <laughs> it, it, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just just had a converse, a super passive aggressive conversation with Jackie right in front of um, everybody, and then just dropped the phone. So like, yeah, just feeling feeling very like I don't give a fuck who I. Who, who has an opinion about anything? I'm just gonna do my fucking shit and you can fuck off. All right, an Angel. Angel is gripping the, uh... He's gripping the side of the door, um, tight enough to, like, almost start to warp the, uh, the interior of the vehicle. And, uh, it's very obvious that he is attempting to, uh, keep his anger and frustration under control but if anybody were to look at his face they'd see that his eyes are piercing red and his fangs are uh, fully fully drawn and like biting into his lip and he's just staring really really hard out the window trying not to uh snap at anybody else in the car right so tense extremely yes a tight wire in the interior, if you will. Hold taut, stretched, and the slightest movement will snap the string. What'd you get on that uh, wits and awareness? 
I got two successes. Okay, you see it. Up ahead. Marcus is taking kind of a, a winding way home. If it can be even be called that. He is also incredibly tense. He's not flushed, but if he was, his knuckles would be white. He's gripping the steering wheel so hard. Which each turn and gentle adjustment, it, the steering column creaks. Up ahead, on the road, there's a road that bisects the one you're on. Marcus doesn't seem to see it. A shadow. At first, you think maybe it belongs to Marcus, Dean. But there's something... Something too swift about it. To direct. The shadows that Marcus is call that he calls are more a twisting, shimmering tentacle-like entity. Even when they branch off of his own shadow. No, this this is someone else. And with two, you're a block away when you realize it's someone in full Kevlar, a helmet. And they have a rifle that they're steadying and aiming. Oh, fuck. What would you like to do? You get to I react think, before anyone in the car. Yeah, I think despite the fact that he's kind of like spaced out, he's also very keenly kind of like hypersensitive right now because of everything that's happened. So I think like immediately, like he would just like start like basically like bang his hand on the on the dash and just like pointing just like marcus 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 up there okay i need everyone to roll a wits and awareness yeah. oh my goodness gb to roll again uh could nope. I this is just for everyone else to see what you're doing okay like to see where you're they your understand got it, yeah. got it got it got it got it I got a six messy critical. I got two. Like, I got four. Four sucks. All right, with the four and six sucks, you have a moment to react. Okay, and we can we see what's going on? Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna let you say it first, Avery. Motherfuck, we gotta- we gotta fucking do something. Shit, fuck. I kinda already got an idea, but I'm- I'm- I'm gonna let you- I think I know who it is already. I think I already know who it is, but like... Uh, fuck. Do we like, shoot the windshield? I mean, shit, wait, no, I need- this needs to be a split second decision. Fuck, fuck, fuck! Yeah. Um... I'm turning on my timer. You have ten seconds. How, question, question, how fast is the car going? How fast is the car going right now? Do we know 60. about how fast the car? 60? I could probably throw myself out of it and survive. <laughs> it's probably not a good idea though. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fucking shoot through the windshield. Okay. Final, final answer. All right, Angel. <laughs> <laughs> is it nighttime right now? It is, yeah. Yeah. Otherwise Angel. you'd be burned up in the sun. <laughs> Angel is going to activate prowess and he is going to attempt to slam his shoulder into his door, take it off the hinges and throw it at the car. You're going to throw it at the rifleman? At the rifleman? Yeah, yeah. He's aiming from his car, right? He, yes. He is. He's parked though, but. Oh, he's parked. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to Captain America the uh, the car door. Okay, so you're gonna. You, okay, cool. So he's not in his car. You know when um, officers use their doors as not only like a like a tripod, but like a barrier between yeah, bullets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would say he's got like a lot of cover right now. So that being said. I need the two of you to make some rolls. Four oh, yeah. 
for Angel, you're going to get a plus one bonus to this scene. Two, okay. That's cool. I'd like you to roll. Gracious, it's like you've got a Mimi weapon, but not quite, you know what I'm saying? Mm, I mean, it, it could be athletics for throwing. Yeah. Uh, let's do strength and athletics. Or dexterity and athletics. I think both with, you know, dexterity for the finesse of the aim. Strength just for the raw power. Either one, up to you. And then obviously okay. for Avery, it's going to be dexterity and firearms. Cool. Please don't fail me now. Please don't fail me now. Four is not bad. It's no oh, okay. fucking oh, nine, though. God yeah, damn. that's Yeah, that's nine successes. Okay. The fuck? It happens in rapid <laughs> succession. Marcus still doesn't see it. He seems lost in some interior battle with maybe his beast. You fire off two shots, Avery. The first one shattering the window, the second one actually aiming, only to have this explosion in the car that causes it to turn. The back end sliding and fish chilling and and then Angel, like a full Captain America, guts still flying, twisting out as he's tossing. And it You watch it break into the other car, smashing the frame and cutting this person in half. <laughs> but not before they fire a bullet. Oh. Lyra, I need you to make a dexterity and an athletics, please. Sure. Oh. Who's the testers? All right, Dean. Yep. I need you to roll the same. Uh, athletics and dex. Mm -hmm. And he should he shouldn't do the car seat. <laughs> is this to? to uh, I, I'm okay with you not answering this question directly, but like, is this to avoid the shot? Do you have something special that'll help you avoid it? No, 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 no. It's just like his decision might change. Yes. Okay. But this so is what not I would say this is not him something he can tell is coming because he originally got two. Okay, okay, okay. That's that's fine. I was just gonna say, yeah, don't yeah. worry about it then. This uh, is the centrifugal force that has sent the car into a fishtail. Okay. Yeah. Athletics I'm randomly le uh, letting letting it decide. So. Uh, two successes. Nice. Okay. What you needed to get was two. Neither of you are hit. The high caliber bullet explodes the first, the upper half of the passenger seat and the back seat where Lyra is sitting. Oof. Inches from her shoulder. Oh my god. As you pass this this carnage, you see the second person in Kevlar step out of the passenger side and watch the Escalade. Angel, you've like gathered up everything again and you're kind of hanging out the Escalade and he throws a gang sign. And I need you to roll an intelligence and an insight. Oh God, not the intelligence, let's see. Intelligence and insight. One success. Faintly, you recognize it. But you can't recall the name. You can only recall an image. An image because it is a powerful one. The image of the original death. The pale, dark rider on an all-white horse. Described in... Uh, some of Bill's sermons when he would have you kids when he would have you boys over for dinner you know mm. but for the life of you you can't remember what that gang was called 
Angel is going to respond with a fanged scowl and a middle finger as his gang sign. And at the same time, he's gonna bang on the roof of the car and say, hey, Yo, Marcus, hurry the fuck up! Before even the adrenaline dies down, Vascalade is careening and flying. And before the, like I said, before the adrenaline calms, you're back at the Red Star. And Jackie is waiting for you in the parking lot. Jeez. Since Angel's already like hanging out the car and like, you know, like gripping the roof, <laughs> he is going to be the first one to hop out and as he does so he's gonna like stumble like holding his innards in again and he is going to stumble his way stubbornly towards the building without even glancing at jackie her expression is worried she does try to engage you she says you're let me let me help put you together you might want to speak to them first. And he just brushes past and uh, heads into the into the into the building. But as he does, so he like he, he sends over his shoulder, I'll be fine. You're not gonna be fine if all of that gets in your way. I, and, but heeding your words, she looks back at the s steaming escalade. Marcus gets out. He comes around and he opens your door, Dean. You get out on your own? All right, I didn't realize I was muted. Uh, yeah, he, he gets out of the, uh, he, he steps out of the car and immediately throws up. I don't know if vampires are supposed to throw up, but that's what he does. It's congealed blood and maybe some ingested uh, microwave pancakes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Marcus gives your back a pat. It'll pass. And since the door where Avery and Lyra is gone on one side, <laughs> um, Avery. Um, gosh, Avery's just like getting the fuck out of the car. Um, not quite as quickly as um, Angel, because obviously, you know, nobody wants to like compete to run in with the dude whose guts are literally on the floor. Um, but yeah, uh, they're they're just fucking not talking to anybody in the car. They just fucking get out like a, I don't know, disgruntled preteen, and um, except you know. Much more pissed because you know stakes are different. Um, and they just walk in and they're uh, they kind of like regard Jackie for a second and they're just like, "It'll probably be okay, eventually." And they just walk back in. Okay, and Lyra. Lyra is going to get out of the the car. She's gonna like look around it like and whistle just woo. I don't know who the hell you guys pissed off, but um, very glad I didn't die just then. She probably uh, yeah, we should probably get inside. And with that, she's going inside. All right, back to Dean. Yeah, Dean just eventually kind of just spits out the last remnants of whatever chunky nonsense is uh in his mouth right now, and then just kind of very sort of like slumped posture, just. Uh, he's just walking towards the door, kind of looks up only very briefly to acknowledge Jackie with like a like a quarter smile before then kind of just slumping through the door inside the building. Okay, before you um, leave her personal space, she is going to pull yeah. you into a hug. Oh, okay. Yeah, he doesn't fight it. Yeah, and then kiss your top the top of your head. Um, and then she's taking off her 
little coat and putting it around your shoulder so she's only in a bustier, but, you know. Yeah. It's the thought, right? Yeah. And she says, we'll be along in just a minute. Yeah. I'll, I'll uh, see you in, inside with the others. She looks like she wants to say something else to you, but instead just pats the top of your head and down the back of your head, much like a grandmother or mother would, sends you off. You miss the gaze that she gives Marcus, but there is a wave of cold that extends beyond her personal aura that you feel. It's a warm night, enough that the asphalt is still warm. But boy, is she frigid when she turns mm. on Marcus. She doesn't. You'd probably just like, yeah, unconsciously, just kind of, or subconsciously, just kind of like shiver and just not really turn around to look. Okay. She doesn't start saying anything until the door closes behind you. Yeah. All right. In the interior, when you uh, first step through back to Angel. Um, hold on, I'm getting the right. Here we go. Here we go. Um, you feel a, a heavy hand on your shoulder and a pat, a big shake. And you're greeted with Victor's bright smile. He says, you really know how to fuck him up. I kind of like that. <laughs> Angel looks him in the face. Um, his, his eyes are still just like completely red. And uh, for a second, um, he he looks confused as if he doesn't even recognize him. And then without saying anything, he is going to like push past him and like stumble his way towards uh, the bar or more specifically to, you know, um, some alcohol. Okay, as you push past him, you see that there are three mortals in the tap room. Victor like follows you to the- Workers? Nope. They look kind of in a stupor. They look kind of, oh. <laughs> kind of, kind of like they were partying and then they were collected. And Victor slides up next to you on the, at the bar, sees what you're trying to do and easily up and over, bringing his cane with him. And he's like, I'll make you something. But how about on top of that, you let yourself feed a little. Brought some snacks in case you kids are hungry. Angel. He, he's listening, but at the same time, he has never... I'm assuming vampires feel the same way humans do, like when it comes to pain, right? Or is it is it lessened? I would say it's a personal choice for you. If you, this okay. is something that you want him to experience it, it is absolutely something he can use I mean, to yeah, keep his humanity. It, 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 you gave him a stain, so I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that like it's uh you know something that is <laughs> enough to you know make him feel different, like completely and utterly different. So I'm going to assume that he's feeling the human version, you know, the normal yeah. realistic version of his gut sliding out of his stomach right now. So he he isn't really computing what um what Victor is saying. He's sort of on autopilot. So as he goes behind the bar, he grabs a bottle of whiskey and just like slams the top of it against the counter to like bust it open. Okay. And he is going to grit his teeth and pour it over his over his stomach. Ooh, it stinks a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. He's like wincing and like growling but at the same time he's like trying to tie uh avery's jacket like really tight around the wound like as he's like purifying it okay go ahead and roll a medicine and an intelligence and at that as you're doing that uh lyra and avery have moved in to the bar you get almost the same greeting from victor seems like he's changed into a different suit, something not bloody. And he says, I brought you kids snacks if you're hungry. And just motions to the 
immortals that seem not quite put together in the back. I got a one. <laughs> You're doing the best job that you can. Angel is also <laughs> tying your your jacket like real tight around his middle, Avery. Yeah, I think I think at this point Avery's gonna like kind of just regard the absolute shit show that's taking place with Angel trying to like fix his falling organs by pouring alcohol on it and then just wrapping it the jacket back around it. You do know that was a temporary fix for a permanent problem, right? You want me to just stuff him back in there and stitch him up? I mean, I'm sure Jackie can do better, but if you're really set on, uh, you know, handling shit yourself, at least fucking make sure your guts are where they're supposed to be before you, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> at, um, at their words, he, uh, he sort of, like, gets a bit more awareness in his eyes and he glances up and with, like, a dry, a dry smile, he says, I'm kind of hoping that, you know, the whole... <laughs> Actually, hold on, who? And then he's gonna, like, look at the humans as if noticing them for the first time. And a frown, uh, like, takes over the smile and he's gonna yell. Get the fuck out! They blink myopically. And though you can see the fair fear in their expression, Victor chuckles. He's setting actual Bloody Marys for everyone on on the bar. And then he comes around with his cane and he says, Sorry, kid. My commands are a little too powerful. <laughs> but if you're hungry... Oh, you brought them for us to... Okay. And he's like, he's like looking at Victor. And, and as, uh, as you are, he's taking off his jacket, rolling up his sleeves, and you see some really in intricate tattoos on his inner arms. Any of them look like death? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no. Uh, looks, okay. like, looks like Russian. Russian, mm -hmm. right. He okay. says you should let the... He looks at Avery. And then he just guesses on your pronoun. Let him stitch you up. Yeah, that that would probably be a little bit better than a tourniquet made of cheap cotton. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's nothing cool about tables. any part of my clothing that's cheap or cotton. Fuck you. But secondly, yeah, I'd like to make sure that your insides stop being your outsides. Victor motions for you. Come on. And he pats the, the top of the pool table. Come on. Lay down. Oh, fuck. I'll go get you this, I'll go get you this suture kit. And then he points at Lyra. Where's your sire? And then that's when the door opens and little Dean comes in. Yeah, he is, uh, he, Dean is spacing out, dude. He's just kind of, well, he's, 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 he's kind of just swaying back and forth. Uh, doesn't really even look up to see who's in the bar. Uh, and just, just goes straight up to the, uh, to the to the bar itself uh, if at this point angel has put down the the bottle of whiskey yeah, he that, did. that he just immediately grabs it i don't know if there's like blood on the bottle probably and then just like chugs it oh i want to i want to try to calm down with the whiskey friend you, you don't want to fuck yourself over and get all drunk He's just, he doesn't even respond. He is just consumed by this bottle right now. Mm. Angel just chuckles and uh, chuckles pain, pain, painfully. <laughs> and he's going to head over to the pool table, um, rip his like upper clothing off along with Avery's hoodie and sort of just flop back on it with a very loud, ah, fuck. Uh, Victor hands you the suture kit, first aid kit, Avery. Um, then he's waiting for Lyra to say where her sire is, if she wants to. Uh, but he whistles to one of the mortals to come over. He just... She will, um, Lyra's just gonna shrug, and she's gonna, like, cock her head. I, I don't know, if I was his keeper, I'd tell you, but, uh, he's kind of... You know him. I, 
like he's everywhere all the time. Yeah. Your guess is as good as mine. Mm. He shrugs. And then he puts a wrist in your face, Angel, and he's like, you're going to want to you're going to want to take a bite while this happens. Go ahead, kid. <laughs> and he's looking at Avery. If if I bite if I bite his wrist, would I like taste his blood? Yeah, but he's got one of the mortals' wrists poised over your mouth. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought he offered his own wrist. I was like, bro. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you don't know me like that, man. <laughs> Yeah, Angel. Angel is going to grab the the wrist and bite it. Yeah, he's just gonna okay. bite it. Not too hard to begin with, but enough to break the skin and start drinking the blood. Okay, it's heady, but it's hmm, it's sad. What the what, sad blood? There's a. A lonely ache. The rush of water. It doesn't taste watered down by any means, but it, it isn't what you're used to. I'm used to that, that fiery blood, right? Right. Oh, beggars can't be choosers. He, yeah, he, he just he gnaws on it and like eyes Avery like... Fucking do it. Just push it in. Pause. You better be glad I like you. That jacket was expensive. Stolen, but expensive. Mm. And they uh they set to work. It's in it's medicine and what? Intelligence. Intelligence, okay. Well, finger fingers crossed, and they're just gonna be like snapping the neck first time for everything. Let's hope I don't fuck this up too, Bob. Three. Ooh. Okay. It only takes a little bit of guidance and help from Victor. Um, and then he makes a comet towards the middle of it, like, well, like, kind of fitting the kidneys back where they belong, uh, putting the, the liver, it's sort of like, it's very, it's, you didn't know it was the liver, but Victor's like, no, that's yeah. the liver, and you're like, oh, it looks like a smashed, um, octopus, cool, okay, you put that in, um, you just kind of arrange things as, as best you can, um, which is pretty, which is, with a three, in incredibly good. Mm -hmm. um. Meanwhile, Angel's just like. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, does it even matter where I put them? As long as you know, I mean, now that we're kindred and all, like, as long as they're in there, does it really matter? Do not fuck me up. Oh, be be thankful that I'm helping you at all, motherfucker. Mm. They, they say that and they just kind of like pat you like affectionately. <laughs> Is you can you job? can talk shit when my hands aren't inside you, okay? <sighs> Hurry the fuck up, please. Victor just raises weird. his eyebrows and wiggles them a little. Eh, not, not in the fun way. Uh, yeah, he just he yeah, amongst a bunch of grunts and growls, he uh, for the most part just lies there and you know takes it like a like a good bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Avery's like, shit, man, I didn't know I could do this. That's dope. <laughs> Alright, Dean, really quick. I need you to roll stamina. Yep. And survival. Stamina, survival. Uh, I found it. <laughs> Two successes. All of the alcohol here is specially designed and crafted through chemistry or maybe evil alchemy. Can't really be sure. Ooh. You don't even really know, but it tastes, yes, like the alcohol, but somehow it's distilled through human blood. Oh. Is this something that I consciously recognize or just I realize something is different? All you realize with a chew is the whiskey has an after aftertaste and it makes something that's been latent in you yeah move it almost feels like you have a traveler with you huh. like something in your chest stirring and awakening it's very faint it's thin but you recognize 
its presence. And if you'd like to know more about it and like really take a delve inwards, you'll need to roll a wits and an insight. But you are starting to finally feel a little bit drunk. <laughs> I feel like I as a player would love to, but I think Dean at the moment is not gonna do that. So he's he's <laughs> just gonna he's just gonna he's just gonna take it. It's just like this is the he doesn't know if it is the fucking I just the the small amount of like the, the trickling of some of the pain and the thought bleeding away as he's drinking it that's giving him this sense of euphoria. But he just he kind of slams the bottle down briefly on the bar. It's just like holy shit, this is good, and then just goes straight back in. All right, you finish off the bottle. And with the two, it's still just a really good humming buzz. But there are Bloody Marys set up on the bar for each of you. There are four. Uh, Dean drinks one. When that one's finished, it's yeah, a little bit more, a um, little bit more woozy. Would you like to do another one? Yeah. All right. So you drink Angels or Avery's because they're busy, and uh, there's two more. You know where this is going, Copin. <laughs> All right. All right, Lyra, do you ever do you ever take your bloody Mary? If this nobody drink, stops him, dude. You? There's sorry, not gonna well, be I'm, drinks left. I couldn't hear you. Do you do you get your bloody Mary that Victor says was for you, or do you just let Dean finish him off? I let Dean finish him. He's pretty he's pretty wasted. Yeah. Yeah, like like very, very wasted. All right. Oh. Um, it takes all of like 20 minutes to get you sutured and, and set back up. And by this okay. point, uh, by this point, you hear this wicked snarl from outside. It's up to Do you. Do I you recognize look. it? Uh, it doesn't. I don't think so because I don't think you've ever heard either of them really get ripped to shit mad. Oh, okay. I thought it was King for a second. So, yeah. But, um, if you choose to look outside, which is totally up to you, I'll just describe a little bit of what you would see. So, um. that's all four of you. Mm -hmm. Any, if it's just a yes or no, there's no role necessary or whatever. But you, I, what, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, I think if, if there was a little bit of a if there was a loud enough noise outside, I think um, after he's finished up these Bloody Marys, he, w he would kind of just like stumble across the room, basically swaying in a different way okay. uh, towards like whatever window or whatever is looking outside. Okay. You can also open the door. That's an option out into the parking lot because that's where it's coming from. So Dean is looking. Avery, are you looking? Yes. Okay. Lyra? Yeah. Okay. And... Angel, you're freshly put together. Uh, there's a numbness that has taken over after feeding. Uh, if you have any hunger, you can lower it by one or two, your choice. But after you've taken the blood, you notice it's it's like the best morphine. You don't feel as much of the pain, but you're not, it's weird. It's just a weird experience to feast off the living and then suddenly everything is fine even though you just had Avery's fucking hands in your bowels. Like, it's... Does does my uh, aggravated damage heal at all? Uh, one point of it. One point, okay. Uh, yeah, Angel, feeling a little bit loopy, but for the most part, like, you know, his head is on straight now from what it was before. Um... Angel is going to throw his uh, his coat over his uh, over his shoulders, like you know, put his arms in the sleeves. But he's gonna leave his torso free for now, just to make sure that nothing snags on the stitches. And he is going to straight up head towards the door to go out. Okay, so you're gonna go out to where the snarl is. So as soon as yeah. that door is open, because you're all you all get to move at the same time. So you all move to the window slash doorway but when it's open you actually hear, hear Jackie's voice and she says how dare you not consult me 
I am the one who brought them in. They are my responsibility. My fledglings. And you see this big bastard. And, uh, Angel, your, your freshly s stitched guts, um, you think this is king. Uh, the guy looks fucking 300 pounds. I mean... Like, overweight or muscular? Uh, both. Big okay. barrel chest, massive arms, uh, big beard, thick mustache. You know, his hair is... I, I would say it looks artfully arranged, but to you it looks fucking greasy like he slicked it back. He's got... He's got like a <clears throat> a flannel over a tank top and he's got jeans with like a belt chain on it and and Jackie is like fruitlessly pushing at him um, and he captures her wrist and he, he says something really really deep and really really soft um, and Jackie just starts crying there's big big bloody tears and then she yes. tries to hit him again and he catches her other wrist and then he looks at you over the top of her head. Because even in her heels that make her 6'1", he's taller than she is. Hmm. What, what type of gaze does he have? Is it like... Steady. Angry? No. Soft? Oh, okay, Just steady. steady. Just like he sees you. Uh, Marcus clears his throat by you. Um, kind of hidden in the shadows. Uh, he's got a... He's got a big old claw mark down his neck and his chest. Mm. Mm hmm. He's not bleeding because, well, he's dead. <laughs> if you rouse the blood, though, you think you think he might leak from this like a sieve, and you're all seeing this. He just he just kind of shakes his head like, "Don't get involved." The fuck is this deal? The gun of a thing. But, as you know, <laughs> King is more dangerous than any of us. And when he decides something, <sighs> we have to fucking listen. And you didn't even know that he was smoking, um, but Marcus flicks one of those bishop cigarettes, and he like, stamps it out, and then he pushes past you into the Red Star. And uh, I need you to all because the door's open to roll intelligence and insight. Got a little two. Laringal. Got, got a three. Messy critical. Got a two. That's so why I got a six. Damn, nice. I be seeing shit. Mm -hmm. I've seen things before and I'll see them again. Okay. So with two successes, all you can tell right now is I think Marcus hates King. A lot. Mm. And then did Dean get a three? I got a two as well. Got a two. Oh, Lyra got a three. Um, with a three... Lyra, it's unmistakable. Marcus does not like being under King's thumb. You can see a potential maneuver here for a rift, or an expansion, or a change in leadership. Avery. Yes. It's very complicated. There's mm. hatred and mad mm. respect. You're not sure in this moment with a six where Marcus's loyalties really lie until until he passes you and you you let those feelers of yours those insightful eyes do the work for you the way that he sees Jackie and feels for Jackie is the bridge that's the gap between King and Marcus. It's a love triangle. <laughs> messy, messy, messy. Very. Yep. And inside, um, 
Marcus and Victor start talking in that language, but Marcus sounds clipped and irritated. And then in English, he says, We're not playing a fucking game! And Victor's like, oh, lifts up his hands and he's grinning. And he's like, My bad. I thought we were going to talk about blowing up the Armitage Hotel, right? And he just motions back to all of you. He says, Half of my crew is completely disabled because of. And Victor's like, You better not say it. You know, he can hear you, right? just lifts a pool table and he throws it across the room. And then he heads upstairs. And Victor's just chuckling. Um. And then he looks at the kids and he's like, don't take anything personal. Remember? <laughs> what a messy fucking... Messy fucking family they got. And then you hear... Outside, Angel, tell about it. you hear Bishop respond to that. Respond to you and Avery. She says, tell us about it. <laughs> you have a bunch of beasts, all tight in a sardine can. <laughs> you shake them up a little bit, of course they're going to fight. But again, it's normal. You'll get used to it. It's a whole new ball game now. This world. And she... Is gonna like pretend like you're holding the door open for her angel and, and just tap your shoulder like, oh, thank you. So polite, Shavir. Yeah, well, that's about all the politeness I got tonight, so you might wanna head inside. She does. And angel is. Eventually, they're all gonna come inside, but you guys have a chance to roleplay if you'd like. Yeah, um, I was gonna say, uh, Angel. Is probably going to just head out for a little bit and just like get some fresh air, like not right on top of you know the the lovers right. <laughs> in the parking lot, but just on the side of the building. Maybe he's just gonna go out for a smoke and just breathe alone. Okay, you go over by the dumpsters, which is like yeah. Okay, Sage is hiding there. <sighs> By the fucking dumpsters. Yeah, she's like, <laughs> like in between the wall and the dumpster a little bit, like. But you can sense her almost immediately. Mm. Yeah. yeah. He's just gonna, he's gonna walk over, um, just very casual and lean against the dumpster. Okay. She's crouched and smoking. <sighs> Mind if I bum one off of you, or? She just holds the pack out. It's gonna take one, uh, light it, just, uh, he smokes a little bit, just enjoying the silence and not having to think <laughs> or, or deal with loud people for a minute. All right, meanwhile there. Lyra, what are you doing? Lyra's gonna shoot a text to Roman um, to see if he's doing okay because of uh, the way that he left her. Okay. It, this time, he doesn't take long to text you back. He says all is well. He's still looking into things. How are things mm. on your end? <laughs> She's gonna text back and say, I think some of them got pretty fucked up, uh, but I, I'm okay. And then she's going to... Um, text back and, and say like again send another text and say we'll update when I get more information he sends a heart I'm glad that you're okay remember other kindred make great meat shields she's literally not gonna answer that and the, then she the is the winky face to... emoji with it is you can just hear him say it in his little unhinged and delightful way he's insane like actually insane um She's gonna like kind of look around and feel out for the vibes of everybody else because she wants to know what's going on like deeper than you know just some surface level shit that's being said out loud um so i i assume that she would like look and try and gauge everybody's overall it mood and whether or not they're open okay are speaking. you gonna use any disciplines no 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 she just wants to gauge their reactions okay, she's not gonna try and manipulate anybody intelligence and wits then Otherwise, it would be intelligence plus aspects for Scry the Soul. That that would also take a Rouse check. So, yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> good. 
intelligence and the wits. Three successes. Bishop and Victor seem fine. They seem like this is just another Tuesday night. Nothing doing. Right? They actually are both sit seated at their place at the poker table. The card's still out in front of them. And my fellow Coterie members. Alright. Uh, Avery and Dean. In that order, what would Lyra pick up from you with three successes? I'll go first then. Um, Avery is right now, like, sitting there kind of up against a wall, just in thought. Um, yeah, they're definitely, like, kind of hand in their pocket, clutching their phone, thinking, think, think, doing a, doing a big think, but they're not, like, engaged with anybody actively right now. They're not, like, interacting. In fact, it seems like they're kind of intentionally trying to avoid interaction with anyone right now. Um, not because of the fact that, like, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it would be like they're gonna, you know, go after anybody or, you know, bite your head off. It's just that they're very, very apprehensive. They're, like, kind of, like, lost in thought, and then every once in a while they'll kind of snap out of it and look around at everybody, and then they'll kind of fade back out again. Um, it just seems like they're very untrusting of the people that are around them right now, um, just because of, you know, the recent, recent goings-on. Yeah, uh, Dean is kind of like in his own little world, sort of swaying back and forth in like a corner of the room. <laughs> he's kind of like seems as though every so often he seems to kind of like talk to himself and it wouldn't take much time for someone to realize it's kind of like he's playing like a highlight reel of the night in his head. Um, so there's like parts where he's just like imitating like a car, like suddenly swerving and like kind of like what stumbling around. <laughs> and then like oh there's God. a moment at which like he just go, he's completely just like stands completely still like completely silent, just like slowly swaying back and forth. And then he just kind of snaps back to himself. And the next thing he does is like grabs a plate and like throws it like it was the fucking car door. Just like, Pew! he's He's starting to make a lot of noise. Well. Homeboy skits. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. Shut the fuck up. Um, In that case, she is not going to either of them. And Victor, she's not going to go to Victor. She, she's going to, because she isn't a very trusting person. Mm -hmm. um, and her coterie is probably like the only people outside of her sire that she can even begin to trust. So she's not going to, she's not going to say anything. She'll just wait for the right moment, I guess. Okay. Avery. Anything you would like to do before I move to the next scene? Um, did I get, did I get Catherine's phone number or did I just get a way to like channel, to interact with her? My sire. Hmm, yes, you would have gotten her phone number. Um, and we can even retcon that. Um, okay. however, the Camarilla does not like technology at all, really. Gotcha, gotcha. So it would be better for me to um to to talk to her through other means. Uh then in that case, um, no, I'm not I'm not gonna do anything, but that's that's something that's kind of going on in the back of their head is like at some point in time perhaps it's there's so much distrust that they're like, maybe I should reach out and at least figure out what's going on on the other side of things just to play the field, figure out what's going on. Okay. Dean, um other than being a truck. <laughs> um well i mean i kind of feel like he's sort of lost in that moment so if nobody like necessarily goes over to interact with him directly it seems like he's kind of in like a loop of sorts okay like playing through this whole night in his head and then he keeps coming back to this one singular moment where he's just like standing there like dead silent in thought. 
and eventually runs out of place to throw. Uh, at which point, I guess he would just kind of swing around, taking stock of, like, the room, uh, and just looking to see what everybody else is doing. Um, and then probably make his way back to the bar again. All right. I don't think there is much doing um, in terms of your coterie. Angel's outside smoking. Lyra's pretty quiet, also assessing the room. And Avery seems to be lost in contemplation. Bishop and Victor are quietly conversing, but both of them seem relaxed. The mortals that they brought are still acting as if nothing strange or weird is happening at all. I think uh, Thine would be looking behind the bar for another bottle of this inca incredible liquor uh, to see if you can find one that's identical or close enough to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't even need to roll. And then he would probably grab a glass, uh, pour, pour a glass of it, and then wander over to uh, Avery with the glass. Okay. And she'd be like, hey, hey! You want some of this? I won't. I won't turn it down. It's really fucking good. It's, it's really fucking good. How many you had so far? Not enough. And passes passes them the glass, but then keeps the bottle and just starts drinking from the bottle. You better be planning to share at least a little bit of that with me. They say as they down the the, the whole glass, just knock it back. Yeah. Just, just refilling it and probably spilling a bunch of it on the floor in the process. That's, that's fine. That's fine. Some fucking night, huh? Yeah, crazy, uh, uh, crazy YouTube video. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'd fucking, I'd fucking, what is it? Dislike, downvote, whatever the fuck it is. The shit out of this one. Dude, do. Do not like and subscribe. Yeah, no, no fucking liking, commenting, subscribing. Absolutely not. Ah, uh, damn. I think he just yeah. like looks. He looks around there. He's like, "Hey, where did the pool table go?" And we had to use it for. Didn't we use it for surgery? Is it still there? Oh wait, no, it got thrown. <laughs> yeah, it got thrown. Right. It got fucking launched. Right. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's it's somewhere upside down or in fucking pieces. Who who goddamn knows? Hey, where's the mouse? The mouse? The mouse. The you know, from from earlier, the mouse. Oh shit, the mouse. The mouse, yeah. Yeah, wait, is mouse dude here? He's cleaning up the evidence. Oh right, right, right. He and he and the mice are the cleaners. Yeah, Bis biscuit's not here. Biscuit's not here. They're uh, they're they're still on the uh, filming site. What? What do you mean biscuit's not here? Biscuit's not here. I want biscuit. Biscuit's papa's not here. Biscuit's biscuit's z d little dad is not here. And I think like. <laughs> Uh, uh, crying over Dean, Dean just crying. like it seems like he's about to like start crying or like throwing a tantrum. What is Lyra doing to this, by the way? <laughs> like literally nothing, just <laughs> watching in utter confusion. Because nobody has come up to her either, so she's just kind of like, no one's gonna update me, and everybody's acting fucking weird. I'm just gonna mind my business. <laughs> by, by this point, I think that Avery is just mildly inebriated enough that seeing Dean this emotionally distraught is like, fuck it, we could go back into the kitchen, like back back where you were making the pancakes earlier. We can just go and see. We can get some get some fucking mice. There's got to be some mice back here. Do you think that this fucking place is cleaned regularly? There's got to be some fucking mice back there. We'll go. We'll go find. It's not biscuit, but we can we can go find somebody, right? Like we can go find a mouse. We can fucking catch a mouse. That's a uh, that's a really good idea. <laughs> to the hunt! Oh. 
Um, I, think, just... I think it's at this point that as they go over, I think that's when, like, we go over to Lyra. And it's like, you want to fucking catch a mouse with us? <laughs> like, like, they just say it like it's so fucking nonplussed, like... No? Question mark? Oops, you're lost. And then she's gonna, like, look at Dean. Are you sure he's okay? Oh, he's fucked. Okay. We're all fucked up. Maybe a better way to handle this would be to talk about our problems. What? To, what? Why do I talk? What, there's, why do I talk about them? He's so fucking snocker that I don't even think he's gonna be able to remember tomorrow. Yes. So maybe he won't remember telling me exactly what the fuck trauma is causing all of this and she's going to like gesture her hand around the both of them um and she's just going to like eye them both hoping that they're going to you know approve of her reasoning and and give her some some insight do you want to talk about the youtube video i would uh do you want to talk about the youtube video i'll i I'm fine to talk about it. But I understand uh, that if you are in a place where even drunk as shit, you're not calling it something real, but instead referring to it as a lie that I told you at the very beginning of all this shit, I don't think that you're in a place right now. And if you're not, as fucked up as it is to say, sometimes whatever whatever you need to keep you going. You know? whatever Whatever the fuck we can say or whatever you need to tell yourself so that you can get the fuck out of, out of that coffin or whatever the fuck we're expected to sleep in these days. Sometimes it takes a little bit and it's okay. If we need to be a little delusional or pretend that it's not real for a little bit, take the edge off. I'm not going to judge you for the way that you cope with this shit. Fucked in the first place that we have to deal with it. But that's so, up to you. yeah, Dean is just kind of staring at you, like, with a mild look of confusion, mouth kind of like half open, kind of stumbling a, a little bit back and forth, just waiting for you to finish. And then he sort of like silently stumbles over to Lyra and like leans in, like invading personal space style. Did you catch that? Yeah, buddy. I got it. You go catch your moms. Do you want to do you, do you, uh, do you want to know about the YouTube video? I think when you're ready, you'll tell me. I could tell you. I could tell you right now. Are you actually ready to tell me right now? I don't care. He Avery. Yep. Yeah. Translate. He cares a lot. He wouldn't be this fucked up if he didn't. No, okay. no, I don't, I don't, I don't care. You care a lot. Actually, no, that's, <laughs> you're, you, you're funny. Do you, oh, Dean. Yes. Look at me, look at me. And Avery, Avery, for the first time, is not, not a super huggy person, but puts, puts their hands on Dean's face. Just very gently. Mm. Do you, do you want me to open your head and see what's in there? Because I know what I'll see already. I know exactly what I'll see. It's okay to not be okay. But we're not gonna fucking get through this shit if we don't work together. It's at this point. They let go they let go of Dean's face. Lyra is is upon like hearing this, she's just gonna hold her hands up and close her eyes. As if she's like just done. You know what? This is a lot and nothing at all. I'm gonna let you guys do your thing. And when the time comes, I'm sure I'll be pulled out of the dark and into the light about everything going on here. For now, go catch your mouse. And then she's gonna turn around and leave. Right, the mouse. Come on, come on, buddy. And Avery, Avery grabs Dean's hand and drags him into the kitchen. <laughs> He's just like, oh, you're so nice. And then just kind of like points almost like backwards to, towards Lara. She's so pretty. She, she is. 
She's beautiful. How's her you? Um, we're all if, uh, we're all a group of lookers. If Lyra exits the uh the like the room or the building, um if Angel sees Lyra, he'll like gesture for her to come over. Right. Um totally where he players, and Sage are. If you went back. You cut out, what'd you say? Totally up to you. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he's um he's just uh he 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 went to sitting on the dumpster now. Um right. I assume that he and Sage are just talking about, you know, the drama that was going on, like, you know, with everything. Yeah, I don't or know. they could just be sitting in silence. Again, totally up to him, to you as a player. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I I think I think that they'd be on the same wavelength of like silence and just, you know, um yeah, but when uh, when Lyra walks over, Angel is going to take another drag of his cigarette, and uh, he's gonna blow it up into the sky in like rings before coughing a little bit and uh, looking down at her. He's gonna say, "So you uh, <laughs> want to know about that video?" Oh, you I heard, heard that? I heard, I, heard, I heard the bullshit going on okay, inside. Okay, thank you, yeah. thank you. So, 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 someone who's uh, of their right, well, are you of your right mind? I mean, I didn't drink any alcohol tonight. Yeah, I mean, trauma can, can do things. I mean, my gut spilling out of my stomach was pretty fucked up, but it's not the first time I had to kill some bastards, so I'm good. Wonderful. Yes, I would love to know about this video. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh... <sighs> he's gonna... He's gonna put the cigarette out on, uh... On the top of the dumpster and flick it into the into the night sky. It's honestly not too... It's not too fucked up, believe it or not. I'm not too sure what happened to Dean when he went around the alleyway in the car. But uh, basically, we went to go help King. And he, like, puts air quotes as he says King. The big dude. But he was already in, like, war bear mode. And I guess H doesn't really make you a better kindred because he was kind of just going berserk and, you know, cut my stomach open like an asshole. But, hey, who... Who knows? I'm new to this, right? But, uh, yeah, no, there were hunters in the alleyway. He was being cornered by them. We killed the hunters, fucked them up real good, and I guess saved Mr. King Bear. And, yeah, that's okay. basically yeah. it. It's, it's really not too, it's, it's not too much. I got, I got my guts torn open. Avery got a few a uh, few skid marks on the on on their knees, and uh, I guess Dean got PTSD. So all was it all in one night, you know, day's work. Okay. I uh, I'm sorry. Question mark. I mean, you don't question get mark is gonna be her thing, by the way. Oh, okay. It's an inner thing. And no, it, it's it's her thing. It's like she's just gonna it's, it's gonna be a recurring thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, Angel Angel just snorts a little bit. Like, <laughs> I don't know why you are apologizing. I mean, it's not like you're the hunter assholes that you know threw fire bullets at me. No, but I wasn't there. I mean, so. Yeah, I probably couldn't have done much anyways. <laughs> Regardless, uh, I'm, I'm really sorry. That sounds fucked. Wait, I mean, did you get your lick back? Did you? you I know? mean, I, I I killed like four of them. I mean, so. I'm talking about for your, you know, stomach being split open. Oh, <laughs> trust me. It's, uh, it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. I'd like to, help. but I mean... I understand that you may be joking, but I don't know. I'll keep that on the down low. I'm not. You, you know what? Balls? I like that. Don't know if your uh, if your skinny little sire can help you if King goes after you though. So you might want to chill on that. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah, 
he has kind of used, he, let me not, because he tends to hear everything even if he's not here. Sure. Um, did you guys kill all of the hunters? No. Or did any slip away? A couple slipped away, but they already fucking know who we are. And they still got our fucking addresses that we couldn't fucking... And at this point, he slams a fist into the dumpster and grits his teeth for a second, uh, sort of taking a breath to calm down. I was going to whistle just, ooh. Yeah, I can't whistle bad. in case you guys haven't noticed. <laughs> we were supposed to handle the business that we needed to tonight. You know, the whole save our fucking family members by getting rid of the evidence of our existence from the hunters. We got the location. We had to save some asshole that decided to, I don't know, fucking, what, snort cocaine and go bear mode? Like, what the fuck was that? A question. What? You know what? Give me a second. And it's at this point that she would uh, attempt to uh, have a premonition to kind of um, see 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 a path a path out of this or a path through this, I should say. Okay. I believe that is a rouse check. Your where the fuck is the button? It's just underneath. Your, uh, not human, your hunger. Okay, I got it, yeah. Okay, so you succeeded. I succeeded! Okay. Through specifically finding these videos and whatnot. Is that kind of what you're looking for? Like, uh, versus the hunters? Yeah. Gotcha. Alright, Angel, you watch as uh, two, two things happen. One, uh, the big man doesn't make any noise, neither can you sense him when he comes around the corner where you're, oh, fucking hell. Where you're on the dumpster and you have a, a really intense feeling that he's heard everything you and Lyra are talking about. And then uh, looking at Lyra's face, she seems unaware of it and one of her pupils dilates, expanding, eating up the entire eye until it's just a black hole. And then you see it bleed into the other eye as the premonition overtakes her. Lyra, I would Here. like you to roll a wits and insight. Here. Two successes. Ooh, a nice little tender one in there. You smell sulfur and burning flesh immediately. Before you is a wall of red mist. And the city surrounded. The mist is a harrowing, screaming entity. And through it, there is a group of heavily armored mortals. Some with flamethrowers, others grenades. But the vision moves beyond them, behind them, as if looking through enemy enemy's eyes. You see a location, and you can, through the sulfur, you can smell the ocean. The salty tang underneath you it's an uneven floor. And when you shift your weight back and forth, the boards under you feel moist. And you put together that it's some kind of dock. There's some kind of warehouse near you, though it's hard to make it out through the screams in the red mist. and then walking out of one of the alleyways, or maybe the warehouse itself, you're squinting. It's hard to quite see it. You see King. And he's 
stops and the mist parts for him. It seems to uh, not affect him the way it does you. He's completely unbothered by it. And then he asks you, do you need some help? And you snap back to your senses. Two things remain in your mind as you're in the here and now, and you can hear King's deep baritone. One, you think you know the location of where the hunters are, which you had already, but something about it feels different. You'd have to double check the longitude latitude that you were given by Catherine. But you think this is a different nest of hunters, a different location. Maybe not where they're holding your videos per se, but where it could really hurt them and really help you get through this. The second, King offering help. Curious, but maybe there's something there. But again, in kindred society, asking someone more powerful or even of equal power for help usually enters some kind of favor, and if you're really unlucky, some kind of life debt. To the both of you, and to Sage, King says, it's time to have introductions in a meeting. Okay, just a second, and I think you promise we'll get back to you. And she's gonna like wait to see if Sage leaves them to be to be by themselves. I mean, she looks at Angel. <laughs> Angel, a Angel is just he he was watching Lyra um as as she did her premonition, and uh, once she like gets out of it, her eyes go back to normal. He uh he's gonna look over at Sage. He's gonna say, "You uh, so you listen to Marcus, or do you listen to him?" She looks at King and kicks up her chin, and he just—he's King size, rolls his eyes, and he steps away, like he couldn't give a shit, but at the same time, curious. I don't know. It's really hard to place, but he ambles off and she says myself but Marcus <laughs> yeah I figured all right uh pretty sure you heard everything I was saying right um <laughs> I should probably give you a little bit more of uh an understanding of exactly what the fuck is going on with me and my my friends here we woke up in a meat locker by the second inquisition and they apparently got uh, dirt on us that can put our personal lives at risk. So we're trying to figure out what the fuck is going on with that and get rid of it. That's basically what's going on with us right now. You know, just a little bit of context. Cause she nods, but she looks like, holy fuck. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's pretty fucked up, right? Yeah. You guys can have a lovers meeting in like ten minutes, I promise. Um, I wanna. I've got some stuff that I need to relay. Context is important. The fuck. But you know what? Go 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 ahead. Wait, actually, hold on. Pause. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Angel is gonna point up and then like wiggle his finger around in a circle and then he's gonna hop off the dumpster let's uh let's take a little ride all right and she's gonna follow him he's gonna look back at sage and say uh hey listen i know it's uh it's a lot front loaded you know what i mean completely understandable if the date you know is is pushed to the side because of the drama going on right now. But if you want to take a ride with us, you can. Um, I don't know about that. She's just Angel. gonna chip in. Angel ignores it. 
<laughs> she, she, she's going to wait to see what Sage says. Uh, okay, well, Sage says, uh, sorry, but it seems like your mistress isn't okay with that. So she goes. Not in a million years, sweetheart. <laughs> well, you're not blind. Maybe you're just dumb. And she'll walk up beside Angel and make her choice. And you don't know if it's petty or if it's because Angel's cool or or how she feels really, but uh, there are sparks like your first encounter sort of flying here from Sage. Okay, is she like going with us or not? Yeah. yeah she She's li Lyra's not going to go. <laughs> Angel, seeing this is going to... Sigh, rub his forehead. Don't worry, Is Sage this... finally says with a laugh. I think it's kind of fun how much control I have. And then she walks past Lyra. Oh, she saw Lyra still there. I, I was just gonna. So Lyra heard that? Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's it's, it's point. sassy, of course you did. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's at that point that Lyra would literally just snort and say, Who's the one leaving right now? And that's it. Like she's gonna go walk towards wherever the fuck his 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 vehicle is, and that's it. She's not entertaining it further. Angel is just going to uh shake his head and make his way to his truck. He's gonna he's gonna call over his shoulder and say, uh I'll catch you later, Sage. She just gives you a salute. Alright. Yeah, he's just gonna he's gonna head into the uh the fucked up escalade. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> just missing the door. Yeah, missing uh, the door and the power steering is gone, it's leaking a little <laughs> bit, you know. It's yeah, it's not. pretty it's pretty fucked. <laughs> Sounds like a fucking liability. It's what it sounds yeah. like. When, yeah. when you are, it sounds like your insurance rates just raised like five hundred dollars. Yeah, like a thousand. Um, <clears throat> uh, Jackie Wait, it still cranks up, right? Jackie, Jackie <laughs> does meet you at the Escalade. Oh. Angel, a Angel's gonna pause um, as he's going to get inside, and he's gonna like lean forward over the over the battered hood, and give her. Uh, like a stoic, a stoic look, and he's gonna say, "What's up?" Don't be gone long. No, is it because of the uh, king's meeting that he mentioned before? There are dangers still lurking in the neighborhood. Hmm. Yeah, I figured. And then she the, actually uh, leans forward and hands you the keys to the Barbie mobile. It's a lot faster than this piece of shit. Trust me with your baby. You're not going to abuse her, right? Nah, the, those sort of things sort of, you know, requires prior discussion. Huh. She's going to take the, the keys. The safe word is peanut butter candy bar. <laughs> That's like th four words. <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best to remember it. He, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna chuckle a little bit, and uh, his expression sort of like softens, and he uh, he gives her a smile. I appreciate it. You uh, stay safe. She just nods, and then she looks at Lyra. Regardless of everything. It's safer to be together, even if it's only just you and your coterie. And then she clips away on her heels. Angel, Angel's gonna uh, toss the keys up and down and look over at Lyra and, and say, all right, the Barbie mobile it is. And they're gonna, I guess, head into it, right? Yep. Yeah. When he um, gets I'm in, he. Yep. I'm, sorry. Uh, I'm assuming these two motherfuckers are still drunk. I don't know how vampire drunkenness works. Um. So, let me know if they're still drunk or if they're not. 
Avery and Dean? Yeah. Uh, We're in the back trying to find a mouse, dude. Avery's not really <laughs> drunk, no matter how no. much they drink. It's really only yeah. just Dean. Yeah, and no, Avery's... Avery's as far as you can like, tell, there's... Pretty... I mean... Okay, she's she's gonna leave them alone then. She's yeah. not gonna message them. Roll an intelligence can... and an insight for me. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And then for the mouse hunt, go ahead and roll intelligence and investigations. Let's go! Avery's just on babysitting. <laughs> One success. One success? <laughs> investigation for... and intelligence? Yep, then? for you guys. And then for Lyra... Um, so with one this. success, they, um, he should be sober within 20 minutes. Vampires don't, they can't get drunk unless they feed off of oh. someone who is drunk. So maybe okay. he's just acting traumatic. He should be, he should be fine. Okay, she's still, she's not going to bring them because they don't have 20 minutes. Nice. Success <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I rolled a, I rolled a three, but uh, <laughs> I got a big old zero, brother. Um, Dean got a goose egg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let me describe this really quick for you guys, and then Wee. we can bounce Lay it between on the scenes. Buster. Yeah. Okay. Um. So some good news and some bad news. <laughs> All right. So good yeah. news. You find a mice, a mouse, Avery. Uh, bad news. It's in a trap and dead. Oh no! But Dean hasn't seen it yet. So I had the fucking I had the fucking trap. I just like okay. kick it under the like the supply. Under, like, you under, know, yeah, the, under the, like, like shelves. Yeah, the supply. What did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh my gosh, yeah. it's a mouse, and he like scurries over to the trash can, which is right next <laughs> to that shelving unit. And then you know, of course, you put your boot in and then kind of flick it a little bit harder and it goes the opposite direction that he's looking. And then finally yeah. to actually hide it, um, you stand in front of it or on it. Yeah, in front of, in front of, not on it. And Dean finds nothing, no mice. Uh... Sorry, buddy. We tried, we tried. Um, let's... You know, uh, well, we we tried. We gave it a look. Um, let's let's do something else then. This day sucks. Let's let's not drink though. Let's let's agree to not drink. Why the fuck not? Because you're kind of sloppy and shit faced, and we're in a room full of people that we don't necessarily trust right now. Yeah, well, fuck. Em. Well, not a room, a building. They're not in the kitchen. Fuck them. Did you ask first? No. You gotta wine and dine first, at least, Dean. I thought you were better than that. Wine. That is such a good idea. No. Uh, 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 uh. And Avery like reaches out and like grabs like the back of the <laughs> turtleneck. <laughs> it's like no, 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 no. <sighs> uh, it's like it's about to go into another tantrum mode. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's 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 get you some let's get you some fucking fresh air. How about how about and uh, oh, okay. Avery starts dragging, still holding the turtleneck, kind of dragging Dean to the the um the door. The last thing not, I'll see it. is is Angel skirting out the parking lot at like sixty miles per hour in in the pink car. Well, that is not now safe. I know where they went. Neither is drinking your fucking, well, I guess, lack of blood, volume, and fucking alcohol. I could do it again. Uh, I fucking hope you don't. But let's, I could. Uh, let's let's never do and say you can. You know what? We'll we'll say, sure you can, Buster. Let's just not fucking tempt it. How about? <sighs> okay. Oh my god. I'm the boring one. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. How's it feel? Actually kind of nice. Normally it's the whole, ooh, crazy ass having voices in their head. Ooh, but you know, now, now I get to feel, I get to be, I get to be the one in charge. I get to be the boring normal one. I get to be the fucking stabilizer. Suck Look it. Me. <laughs> I am the captain now. <laughs> Dean just like uh, looks, stares at Avery, then puts like a 
a hand on their shoulder and just goes, you're doing great. Um, at thanks, this, thanks. are you guys, fun. are you guys in the kitchen or are you in the tap room? Um, the tap room. Okay. Cause Sage comes in. Uh, she takes one look at Dean. Looks at you. Yo! Hey! Looks at the others in the corner. And then she motions with her chin for you guys to follow her into the kitchen. But we I'm just check go, back there. There's, there's no mice in there. She just gives you a look. Just, what? Just, don't, don't worry about it. Just play, play along, play along. Just for me, for me. Play, play along with what? No, no, nothing, 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 nothing. Don't, don't you worry your little head about it. How about? My head is plenty big. Thank you very much. I know it is. It's I know it is. It's a normal size head. It is. Yep. Your head's great. Don't worry about it, bud. Thank you. <laughs> What's up? So as they uh, as they get back into the uh, the the kitchen, you okay? What's what's going on, Sage? Yeah, what's going on, Sage? She actually like closes the distance to Dean and like sniffs his face. Are you actually hey. fucking drunk? Oh yeah, he's fucking sloppy. Like you're, white girl wasted. You're drunk. Did you feed off of one of the mortals? Because none of them look drunk. No, oh. no, no. You've had a bottle. Um, sorry about that, by the way. I don't know if we need to reimburse you on that. I'm not fucking worried about the bottle. Kindred can't get cool. drunk unless they use a vessel first, Dean. Uh, and then oh, looks at Avery. So what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, yeah, Avery, what the fuck is going on here? No, oh, no, 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 I drank the- I drank it. You're not supposed to be drunk. Kindred can't get drunk, buddy. What the fuck are you? I'm Dean. <laughs> hey, you... Avery, did you know that I killed someone today? Yes, I did. And how does that and make you feel, Dean? Do you want to talk about your feelings right now, Dean? About the dead fucking body? About the person you killed? Do you want to talk about that right now? No. Good. And they uh they turn back over. They're they're still holding Dean's face, but they look over to Sage and they're like, "Have you ever fucking heard of anything like this?" I have an idea. I thought he was just. I don't know. Alcohol's never really hit me the same way as other. I have a lot of strong tolerance. I didn't know that was wasn't good sign, normal. All I'm gonna say. It's not a good sign. Not at all. If he is what, what I think he is. Why are you guys whispering? Don't worry We're not about whispering. It. You're just yelling. You're just yelling. You've been oh. yelling. Like, Sorry. Sage is going to bring wasted. over a stool for you to sit on, and then she's going to make a human, what she likes to call a quick shot, which will help get you a little less inebriated. So she's done talking, and she's moved on to this. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple minutes later, Jackie is going to come in, but while... Yep. You're playing, yeah, kind of babysitter nurse Avery, and Dean is yeah. just. Deep you stay in, in the, the goddamn swirls. chair. You you stay on the chair. Stay in the chair, okay? We're gonna do a quick. Stay in this fucking chair. Quick. Meanwhile, to the Barbie mobile. Um, the first, the first thing, uh, Angel, when you uh, turn on the, turn on the car, it's the. Uh, the rate just the radio. Just blasting like a Britney Spears song. Angel lets it play while he uh heads directly away from the uh the club. 
Like he's he's just like driving in silence, uh, like leaned back in the chair. He had to like adjust the uh, you know the the mirror only slightly because you know Jackie isn't that much shorter than him. But he's just like leaned back, like a uh, hand covering his mouth, just like staring hard at the road as he drives away. might be muted Mimi <laughs> sorry anyways um Lyra is going to relay what she saw um and once she's done explaining everything um to the best of her memory she's going to kind of like kick her feet back um kick her feet back kick her seat back and cross her arms and look to him we could use this you know let me know if you need, like, the vision to be explained uh, again. Ba basically, she saw hunters. She saw red mist that would hurt Kindred, but King walked through the red mist without being bothered by it and offered his help, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Angel is quiet as he listens to her recount what she saw. And after she says that he is quiet for a little bit longer before speaking up and saying I'm not getting help from that asshole <laughs> we can use this against him or we can use this to have him help us without us actually asking for it if we phrase it the right way all we need to do is make it seem like he's helping himself by helping us and he might do it when you say Help us. You mean killing those fucking hunters, right? Second Inquisition that you saw in your, your That's So Raven flashback. Thanks for the culture reference. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Angel is going to... Like, uh, he's going to drive into the parking lot of a fucking McDonald's. Um, I'm, I'm assuming they got a, de a, a decent distance away from the, uh, the club. Um, he's going to go into yep. the parking lot, slam it into park, and then he's going to just lean back and uh, sigh. <sighs> Fuck, man. Being around all that bullshit just it starts to it starts to tear with your brain. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm not one for the brooding vibes. What's with that uh, girl of yours? She's pretty uh, wound up. Tight. It's almost sage. Yeah. I mean, I met her a couple of days ago. I wouldn't say that she's necessarily my girl. She surely acts like it. I mean, this is the second time we've gotten into a little issue. So maybe it's me and not you. Uh, or maybe it's her. It's probably I mean, her. It's definitely not me. I ain't do shit. Yeah, th those vibes are not really the vibes that I usually uh, go for. But if we... Uh, use him to get rid of the hunters then we don't have to worry about being in this depressing environment for too long yeah he he is silent again for a while um before speaking and he says from what i can tell and you, you know more than me about this whole vampire bonanza bullshit, right? But on one hand, I got a bunch of fascist assholes that think they're holier than thou because, one, they, they got blue blood and they sip from fucking rich people. Who gives a fuck? And then on the other hand, you got a bunch of disorganized jackasses that can't do a simple operation because they're playing fucking mind games and dick measuring contests with each other, right? Yeah, welcome to the life of a kindred. But you also got people like you and your sire who thinks they're over all of the bullshit 
fighting that goes on in their society and they try to play what neutral neutral diplomat I'd like to call it self-preservation and that's something you're gonna need to get used to in this world yeah well if I if I only cared about self-preservation then I would have sold my boys out and not went to prison self-preservation doesn't necessarily mean your body or you it's you and the things you care about me personally I don't care about a hundred kindred that I don't know but I do care about my coterie and my sire as much as I can I think I think that's sort of where the where the disconnect can come from maybe well, I would like to say that, you know, I'm a hard ass that only cares about me and a select few people. The truth of the matter is that back in the day, I would have laid my life on the line for 50, 60, 70 assholes that spent their fucking days robbing old people and, 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 and fighting in bars like that. That's just me. I can't pretend like I don't give a fuck about other people other than the people who are absolutely close to me that's just not who i am and that's understandable when you're human but we're not human anymore these aren't people who have a rough life who who do what they can to make ends meet these are selfish blood-sucking assholes for the most part it's time you learn that because they would turn you in in a second if it meant <sighs> preserving their own lives what and your the the your sire wouldn't do the same shit. No, he would, and that's why he's not here with me talking. You are. But you also said that you care about him. He's somebody that you would protect. Am I right? Under a few circumstances, I would be more than willing to let him die if he made the wrong choices. But we're not talking about my bond with my sire right now. That's complicated. That I don't have a choice in. You know, I was kind of worried when I became a kindred, you know, after waking up in that meat locker, that my dick wouldn't work, that I'd think about my sister and just, you know, like, be like, hey, she's just a meat sack with blood in her. And I'm really fucking happy that that didn't happen to me. I feel like it might have happened to you a little bit, though. I wouldn't say that much. Um, I just see things the way they are now. I don't... I don't dislike humans. In fact, I have some that I care for. My problem is with those who would do worse to us than what we might consider doing to them. In this case... I can count at least three kindred that we just encountered that would sell us out if the opportunity came. I don't, I don't mean to come off as somebody that doesn't care about anybody but themselves or a select few even. I'm saying most kindred aren't lovable, amazing people, nor are they helpless victims like humans are. Humans were flawed they're flawed I'm not a human anymore and it's hard to remember that most times but kindred especially kindred like King they've had time to reflect on their decisions they've had time to figure out better ways to do things and they just haven't I'm not above using them to preserve my own life and the lives of the people that I care about because they would do the same if not worse to us. It's just the way it works around here. At this, Angel's gonna lean forward, um, like pretty, pretty quickly, like his elbow like slams against the uh the uh <laughs> like the middle, the middle like console part. And he he's like very intensely looking at Lyra. And he's like he he's gesturing with his hands and he, he says and I, 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 I get that. Like, I'm, I'm not sitting here saying that 
I, I plan to be a fucking white knight that wants to, to save every kindred like this is some fucking shitty anime. You know what I mean? But what I'm saying is that I can't just be surrounded by this bullshit, by arrogant assholes that like to play mind games all the time or use people or or people who see themselves as having a fucking 15 inch dick when in reality it's probably seven and a half like my thing is that when i see shit like this it makes me mad it makes me really fucking mad and it makes me want to do something about it not only for me or the people close to me I can't stand, I could never stand having assholes lord themselves over me and the people around me when I could do something to stop it. That's just, that's just how it is. Whether it's King, whether it's Marcus, I don't give a fuck. I He's want to make... I want to I want to make sure that those people that Jackie Sage are fucking friends fucking Dean Avery Blue who by the way is still fucking stuck with the Camarilla asshole bitch I need to make sure that whatever I do it helps them out too I can't just do it for for, for me or for me and you, or just for me, you and Dean. There's more people than that. To this point that Lyra just like, you can tell she's frustrated and she like, just like rubs her temples as though she has a headache. Look, I'm not here to tell you how to live your own life, but it's bigger than Marcus. It's bigger than King. It's bigger than what you could ever imagine. It's bigger than the United States government. It's bigger than it's it's worldwide. There's a system put in place and no it doesn't work for the betterment of most people in this world who are kindred. But I will tell you I'm breaking out of that system. Breaking out of the rank that is assigned to you when you're made a kindred. It's hard. If it wasn't, it would have been done already. We would have known about it. What I can say is do what you feel like you need to do for the people you care about, whether that be Sage or Jackie or Blue or Dean or Avery, whoever you meet along the way. But know that you can't save everybody. I'll help you in whatever you need to do for the people you care about. But I'm not going to lay my life on the line for anybody and everybody. Angel leans back, um, like the, the intensity, like calm down as he like absorbs her words. And he, he simply grits his teeth for a second, shakes his head, and then he just he just nods and he says, all right, then. I know what to expect then. Now, what are we going to do about King? <sighs> King is somebody. <laughs> King is somebody that we can't even fucking touch right now. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm strong. And that's not arrogant speaking. I know I'm strong. But he took a punch, a full power punch for me to the nose and then ripped my fucking guts out. So... Anything physical is no bueno, at least for now. Mental is the way to go, and I'm not talking just about revenge. If he's unscathed by whatever is coming for us, all we have to do is maybe nudge him in the right direction and he'll take them out for us and we won't have to get involved and we won't lose our lives or the lives of the people we care about. I'm not saying I trust him because I don't, if I'm being frank, I don't know him, but if we can use him and I'm not even sure of that, we might as well try. 
<laughs> you think King can take up the second Inquisition by himself? No, I think he can do a little bit more than us who would get immediately harmed if we step into that mess. And honestly, even that's a reach. But it's better than nothing. As you're You talking, got any ideas? As you're talking, Angel, you can see. Shh. Lyra doesn't seem to be aware that one of her pupils is expanding, dilating again. And Lyra, I need you to roll a wits and awareness. You're... She asks the question, do you have any ideas? And then the vision overtakes her. Two successes. Okay, with two. There's a flash of insight. The Coterie with its own base of operations. Its own several blocks of an Elysium. A rise through the ranks, if you will. Respect and fear in equal measure. It would be impressive in this world of darkness if you took out someone like King or made him kneel, so to speak. The other thing that you see, it is Jackie. She's aglow, softly, like a candle flame in a long, dark night. Something has not been touched by the darkness and evils that surround Kindredom. Something unique. Curious with how old Jackie claims to be. But you get the insight, Lyra, that you can trust her more than you can trust any of the other kindred you've met so far. When you return, it's as if you've been gone for days, is what it feels like, but it's only been seconds for Angel. Angel snaps his fingers in front of her face and he says, All right, Raven Simone, you, you good? Can we not call me that? And now that I've seen what I've seen, I think I'm better than good. Look, I don't really know how to explain it, but Mark, Marcus, what the fuck? <laughs> I read the that so Lyra and then was like, what the fuck? And then thought Marcus for whatever so reason. <laughs> Um, King is the key. The future. Stop, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. Um, she's, she's just gonna say King is the key and then she's gonna tell him everything that she saw. Um, and uh, including about, um, Jackie. So she, so just to reiterate, she saw what in the beginning, like, a, us with Elysium. our own base of operations. Um, like in in raising through the ranks essentially breaking through the ranks um or copic i'm sorry you go ahead i'm sorry no you're good. i mean you're I, 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 I i i i think that's enough i i think i get it yeah. like i i was listening but like i missed like the first five seconds but i i, I think i understand okay angel drums his fingers on the steering wheel like as if he's thinking like really hard and like it, it 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 seems like a like a nervous tick like he's like tapping like really fast and then abruptly he nods his head all right okay 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 so what you're saying right because i'm i'm not i'm not good with the whole mental manipulation bullshit that's not me but I can get behind this, right? What you're saying is we make King our bitch. Make other kindred fear and respect us. And then at least in this, this little part of that worldwide conspiracy theory shit you're talking about. In this city, at, at the very least. 
we do things our way, make it a little bit less bullshitty. Am, am I am I picking up what you what you're putting down, or am I like way off? Because I feel yes. like I, I feel I feel like I'm picking it up. No, you're picking it up, but they're not set in stone. What I see. It's just, it's a possibility. We have to play our cards right. So, the fuck do we do about King then? <laughs> fuck if I know. But, we can talk to Jackie. Maybe she'll help us. Get some information on him. See see what goes on with him. See I, I don't know shit him about him. This meeting should tell us just a little bit. If anything. Alright, well... You don't really see eye to eye in a lot of shit, but I'm gonna <laughs> call me stupid, but I'm gonna I'm gonna trust you in this. And he's gonna he's gonna put his fist out. She's gonna like raise her brow. So you didn't trust me before, and she's gonna like fist bump him. Fuck no. <laughs> you you walking around with some fucking suave asshole that's like grabbing your ass. I, I don't know you from a Tim or Tom. Of course I didn't trust you. Yeah, well, again, I didn't choose him. He chose me. We're in this together mm. now, for better or worse. You'll understand when you meet your sire. <laughs> yeah, well, whoever the fuck it is, it doesn't seem like they're too interested in meeting me. And hey, listen, I ain't even know my fucking dad. It's not like I need another one. He's gonna crank the car up. <sighs> okay, I do things piece by piece. First order of business. We find where the fuck they're keeping our information. Because I swear to God, <laughs> nothing gets done if my sister is in harm's way. We find where they're keeping our place. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure we know that already. And we fuck it up, right? All right. I've got my own people that I need to take care of. <sighs> All right, then. Let's get going. With that, he's gonna he's gonna peel out of the parking lot and head back to the uh, head back to the place. All right, right there. We're gonna take a quick BRB for everybody to go to the bathroom. I already did. I got my diaper on. My All right, Avery, you don't need to roll a wits and awareness because the voice is fairly booming. When King yep. says, not politely, get out here. It's time to fucking talk. Stop wasting my time. He's got this deep, deep voice, and there is a slight accent at the irritation. When Marcus comes downstairs, he, the agitation's less, but there's a commanding tone in King's countenance, the way he's standing, like others can't help but obey, but there is absolutely a subtle violence between him and Marcus. To call him. And this get out of here, who is that directed at? Hmm? The, the, he said get out here? To everybody, yeah. To everybody, okay. Uh -huh. Everybody. So, make Sage wince. She's administering the quick shot to Dean and is like, you really need to stop ask acting drunk, like, right now. Um, what, what, what? I'm gonna I'm gonna head out over first. So uh, just, just see nods. what's going on. I'm gonna try and make him throw up. I don't know. I don't know what else to do. You can't go out there like this. Um Yeah, if it if it doesn't if it's not if it's not possible, uh just come out first. Well, you guys need to throw me me to throw up? I could throw up so fast. C can you do it, please? Yeah. Um Is that a challenge? 
Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, what's the um, timer? Sage motions to the like the giant sink. She's like, uh, you have ten seconds. Ten yeah. seconds? No, Bet. Immediately. Immediately. Uh! <laughs> no hesitation. Fingers down the throat. Gross. I got him. I got him from here. Go ahead. Um, Avery. Yeah. Nothing is what it seems. I'm starting to get that uh impression. Thank you. Thanks, Sage. You're a doll. And um they walk out into the foyer <laughs> with the top room. The moment you step into King's presence, I need you to roll resist frenzy. Oh shit. Okay. Um I'm gonna take a second because I forgot a oh, resist frenzy. Here we go. Three successes. Is uh is, is three enough? Yep. Hopefully. Yep. That's the DC mm. you need to be. Maybe Sorry. not. Yeah. You got it. Okay, cool. You got it, you're good. He's uh he's terrifying though. Your can yeah. your beast uh kind of reels back in his presence. He's not sitting. Um he's actually standing. He's he's very, very big. But what you notice Avery is he's got Jackie sitting in front of him and a big palm on her shoulder. And like a doll, she's beautiful and all made up, but she's unflinching. And he's how does intelligence and insight? Yeah, I was gonna say, how's like what's the what's the vibe there? Is she like happy to be there or content? Or is it like a weird, creepy intelligence insight? Cool. Another three. Another another three. Okay. Uh, she doesn't seem concerned, or at the very least, she's used to this. Um, but then his his palm moves to the back of her neck, and his fingers wrap around the pale column of her throat from behind as he talks and addresses the crew. And you notice the subtlest twinge of fear. But when she sees you, she puts on a brave face and smiles. And Marcus just looks pissed and dark and stormy. No one comments on Dean's absence. Flidian's there, but none of his yes. creatures are. Victor and Bishop are no longer shooting the shit. Both look... Mm, like there's something else on their mind. And King starts by... Heard a rumor. A culling. From the Camarilla. Did you know about that, Marcus? He shakes his head no. He says, did you really not know about it? And then Marcus says, I said, fucking I don't. Okay. Right. And it kind of shakes Jackie just a little bit. And she's like, I know we've had a really rough night. Let's everyone just stay calm and discuss what exactly this means. And, and Avery, why don't you, why don't you come over here and go sit by Marcus? Avery nods and just heads over to Marcus. It's down. Doesn't seem like it's the time to be, uh, talking back to anybody or anything like that. We're gonna try to- try to lie low as pos- as low as possible, at least. Okay. Get more information. Just... For the sake of narrative, go ahead and roll intelligence. And stealth. Or, no, 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 let's do manipulation or charisma and stealth because you're just trying to act like nothing doing. Sounds good, sounds good. Thank God for charisma and stealth. I guess subterfuge could also work, but Four. since you're actively like trying to like kind of curl in as well. Yeah, like, that's, a, that's a four. Okay, <clears throat> so you managed to like arrange the body language with the stealth. 
because mm. that's under. I'm assuming I'm taking that for your dexterity, and then with your charisma, you manage to arrange the expression and the feeling of nothing doing. So you do a really, really decent job with that. Um, and su surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, King doesn't seem to care that Dean's there. He divulges, you notice, enough that everybody knows what's coming and they know that potentially the Red Star may be in danger, though they highly, they highly doubt it because it's a new joint. Jackie seems incredibly upset to lose this. We just barely started renovations on the other side and we said we were going to put poles in it for the go-go dancers, um, which just makes Bishop laugh. And there's just something about Jackie that keeps everything light and funny. And you can tell that these apex predators, you think without her, they'd rip each other apart. Like she's the linchpin. That she's the muzzle. And it's something's kind of special. You've seen a lot of interactions working at a bar. You've seen a lot of shitty sides of human beings. But you've also seen great acts of kindness and inspiration. When the conversation finally turns to the fledglings, Marcus is the one that asks, where's Dean? And he's asking you, With Sage in the kitchen, they said they were going to be right there. They said they'd be just a second. I gotta make a roll. Okay. Jackie goes to get up, and King pushes her back down. And he steps off towards the kitchen. He said, I heard a lot about this pumpkin. I'm interested to see myself. She, He's just a little guy. It's not real. I can... And he just points at her. And she... Right, well, she smooths out her outfit as she sits. And then glances at you, Avery. Avery's been like looking between Marcus and Jackie this whole time, so it takes no time at all for them to make eye contact. There is the tiniest shift. She tilts her head, as if saying, Go. Go. Where is the question? Yeah. What would you do? Well, Dean and- Dean and- Dean and Zade should be out already, shouldn't they? They should. But they aren't. There's not another way into the... that kitchen. Two entrances on either side of the bar. Two entrances on either side? Okay. Unless you go outside by the dumpsters and enter that way. Okay. The moment that I go, I'm gonna get in... Oh, I don't want to start a fight with... Okay. I guess I just... I guess I just follow in... Two? I don't know if it's... <laughs> Sorry, this is the moment where I'm overthinking things, which is unfortunately in character, but, uh... <laughs> Ten. No, no. <laughs> oh, dear God, dear God. Yeah, um... Yeah, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna, um... Kind of... Stand and, and really quickly go around the other side just to check and see if, um... They're, you know, on that side or anything like that, if they're still in the kitchen. So you're gonna check the opposite side King is headed to? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. The moment you stand, Jackie also stands. I need you to roll a this time dexterity and subterfuge. Oh shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. As Jackie um, stands, she makes a really loud sound, um, and then her shoe goes flying because she kicks her leg up and it hits Victor in the face, and he's like, "What the fuck?" 
but it causes his drink to dump into Bishop, and Bishop is like, I can't believe you would do this! What are you doing? And Flitian's just laughing. But Marcus is watching you, silent. And all of a sudden, I've... the shadows around you start to thicken. I've I've fucked it. I only have a one. That's okay. I have a one. Oh no. That's okay. The the shadows actually kind of frighten you to step out of them, and Marcus like rubs his face like, oh fuck myself. Um, and then King turns around, um, and Jackie like pretends, very expertly, might I add, she rolled a four, uh, to fall. Like, oh no, my shoe, my 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 <laughs> shoe. Oh no. And Victor's like, what the fuck, you bitch? And King's like, hey, and he just points. He just points at Victor, and Victor goes quiet. And he's like, she almost stabbed my fucking eye out with her stiletto, and Jackie's like, I'm just clumsy. <sighs> but you make it into the kitchen. Gotcha. The shadows themselves actually detach from where they look natural, so it's just tentacly and twisty, and they, like, move around you, and then pull you where you're supposed to go. <laughs> thank Dear God, thank you. And you slide into the kitchen. And you hear the voices, right? And the tensions rising. You think a lot of the kindred out there are hungry, irritated, disgruntled. Good word. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Dean, um, you yeah, find the, yourself face you? down, face down in the big sink in your own throw up. And Sage is mm -hmm. trying to get, to get you <laughs> to, to, stop and you aren't stopping at this point it's just dry heaving and blood flecks that are coming out of your mouth on a constant and the world is blurring your hunger has increased to three all right and sage looks up at, at you avery and is like i don't know what the fuck to do i don't know what the fuck is happening hey buddy well I, uh, we don't have a lot of time. Um, this is gonna be fucking messy. Uh, is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something fucking weird. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. Um, fingers crossed I don't scramble Dean. Um, but you know, <clears throat> it's real hot girl shit. Um, I'm gonna grab Dean really fast. Um, pull him up against like the racks, like, uh, like, there's got to be, like, a little space in between, like, two of the, like, racks of, like, you know, different yep. cleaning supplies. You push them right kitchen. up against the tile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in, in just that, like, little tiny indent, just so that hopefully when King walks in, he doesn't see us immediately. Um, hands on the face again, and I'm going to try to cloud memory in the, or, sorry, I'm going to attempt to, yeah, dominate cloud memory in the hopes that I can make him forget he's drunk. I don't know if that's <laughs> physically possible, um, but I'm hoping that if I can make Dean forget that he drank in the first place, that it will hopefully psycho counteract enough that he will sober up at least a little bit. I don't know if that's possible, but I I'm gonna it. fucking try this shit because it's, the only, it's literally the only thing that we have. Okay, so Ooh. charisma plus dominate versus wits and resolves. So Dean, cool. you'll wits, be and wits and resolve. Yes. Cool. Okay. All right. How do I? Wait. Give me a second. Charisma dominate. Okay. Um. So, that's it. Resolve. Okay. The Wait, reason okay. we're rolling is it's been long enough. It's more than just a few minutes. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit. Um, sorry. I'm just trying to remember how to do this. Uh, so I just add the charisma onto this. Okay. Mm -hmm. so and you this. can also rouse your blood if you would like to add oh, extra die. Uh, I would actually. Yeah. Okay. I. Um, so I just add one extra die if I rouse, mm -hmm. correct? Okay. Um, wait. Wait, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna... How do I... I think, I think it's two, it's a 2d10, I believe you said in the beginning, Copic. Did I? I think it, I think it might be for a higher tier. Wait, I'm... Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to... Sorry, I'm so sorry. The, the rolling for, uh, Dominate always throws me off. Is it... So on the on the power, mm. right? It should have a little dice by dominate. Uh, yes. Let's see. And do I just roll that? Because every time it says no attribute was found, so it's charisma and then dice pool modifier. There should be two. So There's only one. And your. 
Oh, it is two. You're right. You're right, Yami. Yeah, that's that's the issue I'm having. Let's see. Is it supposed to be two? I think you just slash R one uh two D ten and uh you can see the results that way. Yeah, I just tried to roll, but it just doesn't let it just doesn't let my roll for some I think it's oh. because of the two I need it needs two attributes rather than just charisma. But I don't know what the second attribute. This is two dice pool modifiers. Three. Submit. Okay, it rolled for me. So click. So click your charisma. Okay. Okay, and then second attribute is nothing. Submit. Okay. Dice pool modifier will be three. Three. Okay. And then hit submit. And then. Didn't work. <laughs> what is happening? I wonder why it's not. Because it's. Ro oh. It rolls. Oh, I did it. Wait. It rolled. No, I, I rolled for you, and it rolls for me. Huh? If you, yeah, it's under dominate. It's the roll button under dominate. No, no, click charisma. Oh, oh, the charisma stat. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just come down to your dominate, right? Count yeah. how many dots you have. Okay. Okay. Uh, so boop. And then three. Okay, this None. is this is where I'm, I'm figuring it out. Dice pool modifier will be. Uh -huh. So if you have two dots, and then you rouse the blood, it's plus four, and then you hit submit. Oh, I didn't do the plus four. You got a messy critical, though. I got a messy critical, so I'm honestly, I think it's better if I just don't touch it. I think it's better if I don't touch it. <laughs> we settle, we settle. Okay. Yeah, we settle, we settle, we All are right, settling. You got six successes, That's in, it's crazy. Um, and then what did Dean get? Oh, two. Oh, um, with a messy critical? Yeah, Avery, you're, you're not very gentle. Ripping through his memories. Um, feeling his pain. It's, it's like you're back on the street in that alleyway there's that flaming whip and the horrible sound of the bear slashing and eating i mean it's just that you're seeing it through dean's eyes and you see the claymore you see victor covered in blood laughing encouraging the death with six successes you have a chance to take it all right now <laughs> Do I do I feel intrinsically like taking it all will negatively impact him? Like you, you tell me with your messy critical and what you've known and been shown through the the chronicle so far. What would the Avery longer do? the longer that it goes, the worse it is, and I think that's too long. I think really, I really don't want to scramble my buddy, but I. Mm. I think in a brief in a in a brief and wildly ambitious moment they're just going to take like a moment and think about rational thought and think about everything that they know and go fuck that noise like I know exactly what I'm capable of and I believe like I'm I'm fucking powerful enough to do this and they're going to try and take all of it. <gasps> it's that moment of like you want crazy? I'll fucking show you crazy. Let's go. And yeah, I, uh, I attempt to take all of it. Okay. Just all, all of that particular, that particular, um, like, traumatic moment for him. Dean. Oh. Yep. You permanently lose a point of humanity. Okay. Oh, yo. <laughs> Sorry. Let's go. <laughs> and Avery. Oh. Yeah. You gain a stain. Cool. Um, where do I put stains? So they're X's. Like, they're like the slashes on your humanity. Gotcha. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah, let's yeah see. if you... I think the way to add them is, like, there's a little cog next to the humanity... Gotcha. ...thing, yep. and you click on that, and then it says yep. stains you can put and in. You got one. I had yep. to have... I needed to have one eventually. I think I have two. Yeah, you're big sad, but now you don't yeah. remember why. Yeah, it's just like real life. <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, this is Yo. fucking great. I'm loving it. 
as a player. Gonna, this is this is gonna this is gonna be one of those things that now now Avery's gonna get to stay up at night and fucking sob over. It'll be great. It'll be great. We're we're sharing. We're sharing. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. The other kitchen you're, door you're, pushes you're open. Up, bro. <laughs> and as Dean comes to, King is standing in the kitchen with you. So you're the pumpkin we've heard so much about. How do I feel? Strange. It feels like there's like... a hole in your chest, but you can't remember why. Do I remember that this is King? Nope, you wouldn't, would you? I wouldn't, right? <laughs> nope. Okay. You remember the kittens. There are six of them. Their mom was a yeah. calico. And there was Biscuit. He was cool. Okay. Um... Yeah, Dean would just be, just look at, at Mai, and Sage is still back here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, not Mai, sorry, Avery and Sage. She's like, who's this guy? King squints at you. And then his eyes slide over to Avery, then to Sage. And Sage steps forward, kind of putting herself between the two of you. And is like, sorry about that, King. We were just cleaning up. I know about King, though, right? I've heard him come up in conversation. Yes. Okay. This is King. Yep. Sage says this is this is King. Um. So I know you said that like everybody else sort of felt this imposing presence with him around do i feel that as well you don't i don't okay he's just a big guy with a big old beard kind of greasy hair looks sort of like a lumberjack biker but, oh you're uh you're a very big man he shifts back and holds the door open Read the room. What, you, like, you want me to go out there? If I kind of, like, push, like, kind of shoulder checks them a little bit, like, gently kind of bumps shoulders with them. Come on, bud. What? what? Let's go. Family meeting. So, uh, he, Dean looks quite confused, because, because like, I've always, obviously, that feels like there's something missing, but, like, the capability of the human mind to start, like, inventing reasons for why things make sense. Uh, and he's just kind of like, Wild night. I barely even remember being in here. As he's kind of, like, walking out. Sage also leaves. And as she does, King reaches up and puts a hand on the back of her neck and leans down to whisper something to her to have her, like, kind of pull away. And then she goes as far as she can while still being in involved in the quote-unquote meeting. And once he's out here, uh, everything that was chaos is like really, really still. Like it feels like the floor is covered in eggshells. And then King grins and says, "Why are we so uptight? Let's relax." And he actually takes a sit. And when he does, there is relief. <laughs> Dean is just like, "Yeah, why are we so uptight? Whoa! I, sorry, I feel dizzy." You don't feel good at all. Again, there's that hole. <sighs> like, it feels like you have this weird headache. It's kind of hard to focus, Dean. You're incredibly hungry. Doesn't look like anyone's eating, though. Doesn't look like this is a super social event. And then King leans forward and says, So, Avery, Dean, tell me about your visit to the Armitage Hotel. So, like, basically what happened was that, um, 
we were in the thing. I brought a sword because... When you say sword, there's an intense pain at the back of your skull. Mm. And you suddenly want to cry. Uh, uh, and, like, it was, honestly, it was kind of embarrassing because, like, we went in the room. Oh, my head really hurts. And then uh, I was, like, didn't know what to do with the sword, so I put it in the umbrella holster and I kind of, like, knocked it over. And it was, like, a whole thing. And then I thought that there was, like, a knight there and I told her, like, that's not a thing. Fuck, sorry. Uh, I feel a little bit off tonight. Did you, uh, did you get hurt earlier this evening? You doing all right, bud? I must And Avery have. kind of looks at you like, play along, play along. So anyway, we were talking to that guy. No, it wasn't a guy. No, it was a... You know what? It doesn't matter. We, we were talking and then it was like, talk about like some kind of like fucking... Uh, what was it? Uh, someone mentioned like a culling or something. King just oh, no. looks at Ivory. Er, Ivory, holy moly, looks at Avery. We met with my sire. Who talked about a few things. Largest priority was making sure that we get those um, tapes back from the Inquisition. That makes him... As Fold his arms across his chest and nod appreciatively. We got some information, but due to the fact that, well, the nature of my sire is dubious at best, we couldn't entirely guarantee that the information was correct. So we came back and we uh, attempted to clarify whether or not it was real for ourselves. Don't want to walk into a trap or anything like that. Yeah, weren't we supposed to do that tonight? When, yes, when you glance at your more. watch, Dean, it's like way later than you thought. Yeah. There's still a couple hours before sunrise, but you even see a message that you responded to, to Sam, that you don't clearly remember sending back a message. I mean, that's kind of one of the last things you to sort of remember and then there's that sudden piercing behind your eyes god you just feel so awful I'm, I'm gonna yeah, sorry uh, king does like a, a bow a royal bow um, <laughs> do you mind if I just sit down just motions by all means Okay. And he just like very slowly lowers himself into the chair and just kind of like sinks into it. So did we verify where these videos are being kept? After all, if you're being sheltered here, then the family is in danger. Your danger is our danger. Yes, we've confirmed where the location is. Perfect. So we're just waiting on the borrowers of the pink car to come back home? Yep, once the rest of the coterie is back, then we're ready to go. Nice. Well then, if there's no other questions, and he stands up. And then he looks at Jackie, and he whistles. And she stands. She says, let me know when they're back. And he leaves downstairs. Jackie gives Marcus a look, and it is a look that a mom gives a child, or a mom gives a dad motions, and then she follows King. And that's when Angel and Lyra return, just a few minutes after King and Jackie have descended the steps into the basement. He doesn't even give you any time to ask questions. When Angel walks in, is everybody still in there? Like um, everyone? Or So there's like 10 minutes. 
So essentially, unless the NPCs are talked to, Bishop and Victor go and smoke outside. Um, Flidian <clears throat> is going to give Biscuit to Dean, who seems a little distressed. Um, so it's Avery, Dean, Marcus, and Flidian in the tap room, and the other two kindred are out smoking, and then you don't know where Jackie and King are. Okay. Bro, I feel so unfucking safe in this place now. <laughs> <laughs> Angel, Angel, like looks in, like he he walks in, um, looks around with like a sort of like uh, inquisitive gaze. He, ca he he sees Avery and Dean, and as soon as he sees them, he like tilts his head towards them and then like jerks it back towards the door before uh, exiting out into the into the night. Avery, uh, like, once again, like, you know, kind of drags Dean if need be. And is like, I'm so fucking sorry. I'm so, so fucking sorry. Huh? Uh, that's right, you don't remember. I will explain in a minute, uh, but we need to get oh. out right now. Uh, I kind of got a headache right now. Uh, yeah, is it important? Uh, Avery, Avery taps their, their temple I may be responsible for the reason why you have a headache. I don't think that's possible, because I would have remembered that. <laughs> Not if I'm doing my job right, you wouldn't. I don't know what that means. And as they, they step out and the door closes behind them. So, you know that thing that I did with Blue in the alleyway? Oh yeah, like you changed his memories or something, right? Yeah, I, uh... I kinda stole yours. Huh? I kind of stole yours. I have a good reason. I have a good reason. I have a good reason. I swear. I just. That's okay. I, I, if you did it, I'm sure you had I, a good reason. I thought he was going to fucking kill you. I thought he was going to fucking kill you. So are what, you King? are you four outside then? Yeah. With an awareness. All of us? Yeah, all four of you. Two successes. Two successes. I got four. Uh. <laughs> I'm still getting zero. <laughs> Sometimes the narrative tells itself, boys. Well, little buddy is so good at it. <laughs> Alright. Where are you outside? Where do you guys move to? Do you move off the property? Do you move, like, in the front of the building? Back of the building? Um, Angel is going to guide them back towards, uh, like, just... He, he has a tendency to, like, head towards, like, the curb... Like towards like a uh, you know like uh those like lights. Gotcha, that... gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's so where he leads them over to. I'm gonna assume you're picking a different one than the one that Heckle and Jekyll are smoking at. And as you're yeah. as you're moving there, um, Angel, you notice that the shadows get thicker and thicker and thicker, and then the lights start flickering all the way down the street, and then everything plunges into the dark for just a moment. Um, and there, it, it, it's like a moment out of, out of time. Marcus is stepping out from behind the lamppost. Um, he runs a hand through his hair before you guys even have a chance to com converse. Oh, hey, Marcus. You've been here the whole time. <laughs> just kind of gets this like, disbelieving smile at just how chipper you are, but also with a two, anyone that got a two on their wits and awareness and above, um, you can you can feel the guilt in Marcus. There's just something that Dean triggers for him that very likely reminds him of a touchstone. And you recognize a kindred going out on a limb. Out of his pants, his nice slacks, he pulls a set of keys, a ring of them. And he holds them out on his finger for anyone to take. 
What kind of keys do they look like? Look like house keys, car keys, mailbox key. Looks like. like Dean, Dean just kind of sorts up like, oh sweet. Grab, grabs the keys. What? What are these for? You can't stay here. Oh. I think he's gonna look at Angel. And then he's gonna look at Lyra. Angel is looking him like dead in the face like completely like uh poker face uh, like he's not good at actual poker <laughs> like poker yeah. facing and poker but right now like his face is completely devoid of uh emotion as he as he just listens where exactly does this uh actually no don't answer that is it bugged Shakes his head no. And nobody but you knows where this place is. On Turkey. Okay. These are her keys. I don't know why she cares for all of you so much. And then he kind of looks at Dean, and, and it's there. You see, he cares. Dean, you want to hurt Marcus? You got it right there. Grant, granted, you don't really want to hurt the puppy, but it's, you know... Yeah. Um, yeah. And Marcus sigh, lets out an unneeded sigh, and he says, "You can't trust any kindred." Well, I've been trying to say that for a while. Dead tongues, heated, are true death rot. All of us are creatures, monsters, liars, except maybe him. He's not like us, not exactly, and I endeavor you try to find out and keep him from King as far as you can. Dean is just looking like behind him, like. Well, dear. Puts, Dean puts his arm on Angel's shoulder. Will do. <laughs> Angel. <laughs> Angel looks down at his at his elbow and like snorts and brushes it off. All right. Well, didn't really think that this would be a goodbye so early after you know you saved that bacon in he the shakes his head. chop shop. King is different. He's changed, and I don't know why. But it's not your fight. So get out while you can. <sighs> Angel. Angel glances over at Lyra at those words before simply nodding his head and uh, offering a hand for a shake but for what it what is worth you're pretty cool I'm just a man trying not to be a monster even though I am one and he shakes <sighs> all right well whether you gonna... realize it or not though all of you owe Jackie a life debt, according to the old kindred ways. If King knew, he would leave her for the sun. Knew what that we were leaving tonight? That she's disobeying him. So is that what they got going on? Another BDSM? relationship <laughs> I wish it was only that it's not your fight seem... unless you want it to be decide carefully before you ask me any more questions because do I get the feeling that King can hear us all the way out here like would I know at all or no no um, not with that wits and awareness you think it's it's literally because the more you know the more you put yourself on one side of the fence. Mm. Yeah. Angel is gonna glance at the at, at his coterie behind him before like leaning in and saying like quietly and intensely. Does it have something to do with the uh the Yahoos you told me about? He nods. Before. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Fucking great. Marcus. 
How the fuck are you gonna let somebody like that take over what you got going on here? Emotions to the four of you. I wanted your help. But it's not my choice to make, it's yours. Get out of here. And don't come You got back our numbers. Unless you really want to fight. We'll be back once we're in a place too. Well, <laughs> I'll be back. Sorry, shouldn't speak for everyone. That's not my place. If no. you need the, casu the casual assistance, you have mine and Jackie's number. But she's told you to take her car. And she doesn't want it no more. She says it's a gift. <laughs> you were just racking up debts, right? But he, he says it in like a sort of like a joking tone. Yeah. Bishop finally notices you and she kind of tilts her head looking at Marcus. And then Marcus steps away from the four of you without saying a word. Uh, sorry, I would just say as, as before he goes if I have a moment. Go for it. Yeah, he, uh, Dean would just be like, you look really sad, man. And just kind of like gives him a little kind of like bump with his fist on the chest. Cheer up. <laughs> when you when you do that, everyone else, the look on Marcus's face, you get it now. In life, he must have been a father. Because the way he looks at Dean, there's no other... There's no other description. There's no other answer that would make sense. And he hugs you, Dean. Oh, oh. oh I didn't realize we were that close. <laughs> hey, man. Just give him a couple of, like, thumps on the back with his hands. And then kind of like when he sort of releases the embrace, just goes, <clears throat> puts on his best uh, Sean Bean impression. You have my sword. And then there's that stinging pain in the back of his head. It's like, oh, Fuck, what is with that word, man? I really like sword. Oh, fuck! You're something else. <laughs> we'll work on that, don't worry. Put those keys in your pockets, Dean. Like, don't just flaunt them around. <laughs> Alright, oh, we're gonna yeah. be... We're gonna be heading out, Marcus. You got our numbers on these fucking boner Nokia phones, these bricks. If you need ones. something, call us. He just gives you uh, he gives you a dead ass look, Angel, and he says, I won't. It's your choice. Sure, sure. With the final a final nod, Angel is going to sigh, square his shoulders, and without looking at uh the, the woman that, you know, glanced over at Marcus, he is going to go directly towards Jackie's car. Yeah, Dean, Dean's falling close behind him. I could drive, yeah? He says, <laughs> almost tripping over, like, the smallest rock you've ever fucking seen in your life. Oh, brother. Uh, Lyra is going to look at Dean and just scoff, but then look back up towards where Marcus was. And you kind of like see that there's like a tinge of like confusion and understanding that crosses her face very slowly. Um, and then she, she follows Angel. Let's exchange. Toss me the house keys. You get the car keys. I feel like with Dean's experience with the cars, you could probably figure out which one's a car key, right? I mean, Angel just like toss him the 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 car keys. Okay, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, sure. Because he still has them from before. Gotcha. He, uh, yeah, and he opens up his hands for the the house keys. All right. Yeah. All right. It's an overhand throw. <laughs> he catches it without looking back. <laughs> <laughs> Any last descriptions for you, Avery? I think Avery just kind of like walks you know starts to walk away with the rest of the group and kind of turns over their shoulder 
as uh, you know, he disappears, as Marcus disappears and kind of turns back around and kind of to themselves, you know, as they as they've started picking up slowly but surely, they they're talking to themselves a lot more, and they're like, well, if we've got to be kindred. At least there's some rem resemblance of a role model that we've got out there. And they, uh, go back, they, you know, they start speeding up a little bit to join the rest of the coterie, the car. When Angel gets in the, when Angel gets into the, uh, the passenger seat, he's going to, uh, take out his phone, <laughs> flip over to, uh, Sage's, uh, contact, um, in the messages. And he's, he's gonna hesitate <laughs> for a second. Before typing, yo, Ooh. <laughs> that's it. Sorry, yeah. that's it. <laughs> I mean, she so she would just see like the the angel is typing <laughs> pop up for like a minute straight before he messages. <sighs> we probably, we probably, we probably won't be having that date. I'll catch you another time a different time <laughs> and then he's just going to he's gonna mute the, <laughs> the, he's gonna mute the, the the conversation and put his phone in his pocket okay I mean I don't know if you can mute it on an old uh, weapon I oh, see here, say, with, a, with a phone that old dude there's like a physical switch on it don't yeah. do this like, you gotta like <laughs> you gotta turn the phone like you, yeah it's like a clicker you know <laughs> like the back of a Tamagotchi when you got a hard reset that shit. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what it's like. Yeah, he's turning that bitch off. All right. Um, who's navigating? Who's actually Angel? You're in the passenger seat. Roll for me, intelligence and investigation. Who's in the back seat? Is it? We didn't even get the directions. That would be Lyra and Avery would be in the back seat. Avery. Yeah, that's why I need Angel to roll really quick. In case of Lyra and Avery, I need the two of you to roll wits and awareness. In the back seat. Right. Intelligence and what? Um, investigation. Oh fuck! I know. Dude. I know. I'm just rolling straight twos. <laughs> I hope I get a two. Yes. Three. You have three. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 Uh, so three is what you needed. I got, I got a three. Three is what you needed. Good job. Um, fuck Angel, yeah. what did you get in your investigation? I got a. I got a two. Okay. So, got a two. So. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of goes like this, like, Dean, like, gets the car started, he's like, alright, where are we going? And nobody fucking knows, and Avery's like, why don't you check the glove box, see if there's, like, <laughs> anything in there. And then there is a map that's circled in pink lipstick. Oh. Yeah. Do I recognize the area it's in? It's a nice area, but it's nowhere near any kindred. Good shit, good shit. So. Uh, you're gonna be taking a right up at this next light, Dean. Let's get the fuck out of here fast. Roll a dexterity and drive, Dean. Let's go. I uh, do not get a one. Dex and drive. Ooh. Six nice. successes. Messy Thanks. <laughs> um, Look at you. Jackie's car is a Rolls Royce. Damn. Um, it's, All right. It's very nice pretty fast okay yeah you just like you right got it with with a six you also pop down like her her sunglasses holder right and they're all oh. blinged out big ass blinged out sunglasses are they pink oh i put them on 100 percent. they are pink but <laughs> um dean's a good fucking driver yeah man Screeching off, do it, do a quick donut and in the parking lot. <laughs> Woo, rubies! <laughs> and with that, we're gonna end today's session. <laughs> Woo, rubies! Yo, that is crazy. We we completely went off the beaten path just now. What the fuck? It's awesome. You're. It's just like that sometimes. Really do. I mean, let, let's be honest, bro. With somebody like King, there's no way we were just doing shit for him. Like, it, oh. it just wasn't gonna happen. Yeah, you think you think literally any of us with our fucking does doesn't doesn't do well with authority figures, asses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you didn't stand a chance. <laughs> really, every every single one of us is like, 
mommy and or daddy issues and does not do well with authority figures. I hope we go kill fucking hunters, uh, you know. Hell yeah! Next session. Fuck those hunters. <laughs>